the future of AI is open source. And the most popular way to get started with open source large language models is Olama. Olama is an open source tool that allows developers to access and deploy open source models on their local hardware or on any hardware they have access to. Developers can access large language models from the likes of Meta and Mistral, including things like Llama 3.3, but you also get access to embedding models from leading open source model providers from folks like Nomic, there's a popular sentence transformer models, as well as labs like Gina and the BGE models. In this video, I'm going to show you how to combine Olama and these really popular open source models in order to build AI applications with the world's most beloved database. That's right, we're going to show you how to use Postgres in order to build a RAG and search application. And in particular, I'm going to show you how to combine PG Vector, which turns Postgres into a vector database, with the PG AI extension and PG AI vectorizer to automatically create embeddings and access LLM models. In this case, we're going to be accessing a model that's hosted locally via Olama for a RAG application. Let's get started. So everything that I'm going to show you in today's video can be found on the PGAI GitHub repo. If you scroll down, once you hit the repo in the quick start section, you'll find all the code and examples, maybe a different data set, but the same steps are going to be available to you. So if you're wondering where the code is, you can head over there to find it. So the first step is we need a way to actually deploy Olama and Postgres. And for that, I'm going to use Docker. And what I have in front of me is this Docker compose file. And so you can see here that what this Docker compose file is going to do is spin up a database. That's going to be Postgres with the timescale DB. I'm going to spin up an Olama instance. This is going to be the way that we actually run Olama and access our LLMs and embedding models locally. This is all running just on my MacBook. And also a vectorizer worker, which I'm going to get you in a moment. This is a worker that's actually going to be doing the work of creating the embeddings and making sure everything stays in sync. So this is the Docker compose file. I've actually gone ahead and ran this file already. And so you can see here, what I have spun up is this timescale PGI vectorizer worker. I've got a timescale DB database, a Postgres database, and I've got Olama. So now that we have everything set up, let's uh, look at a data set that we're going to use for today's video. And that data set is going to be an example of Sam Altman's blog post. What I have already loaded into my Postgres database in this table called blogs is a subset of Sam Altman's blog. I've just loaded about 10 of them just to, to make this example really quick, but it's full blog posts from the blog of OpenAI CEO, Sam Altman. And so what I'm storing is things like the title, the date of publication, as you can see here, as well as the full text of the blog post, in some cases, hundreds of words. So this is going to require us to do some things like chunking and splitting in order to create embeddings. And that's what we're going to do in the next step, create embeddings from these blogs in order to use for search and rag. And we're going to use Olama and PGAI vectorizer to help us do that job. So let's see how that works. So I'm back in my terminal. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm, I've downloaded the models that we're going to use. Now, the cool thing about Olama is that in order to access models, all you need to do is just run Olama pull. So in this case, I'm going to exec into my Olama container and then make sure that I've downloaded the nomic embed text model, which is the text embedding model that I'm going to use, and make sure that I'm also downloaded this tiny llama, which is the LLM that I'm going to use. A little bit of information about the models in today's video. Nomic embed, you can see here I'm in the Olama model repository, one of the most popular embedding models. You can read more about it here, but it's basically a competitor to things like OpenAI, Ada2, and Text Embedding 3 Small. It's free, it's open source, you can use it via Olama. That's why I picked it for today's video. The other model that I'm going to be using is called Tiny Llama. So let's see the Olama page for that. It's a 1.1 billion parameter model that is a super compact LLM. So this is perfect. I'm just running it on my MacBook Pro. This is a perfect size for the example in today's video. So now that we have downloaded the LLMs and the embedding models that we're going to use, let's take a look at the steps that we need to set up in Postgres in order to use Postgres as a vector database for search and rag with the Olama models. So the first thing we're going to do is run this create extension statement, which is going to install the PGAI and PG vector extensions. So this is something I've actually already done. 
So we should get uh, no results because this is extension is already there. If you want to actually check that your database has these extensions, you can just run the backslash DX command. And you can see here, I have the AI extension as well as the vector extension with some other helper extensions installed as well. So step two is to actually load some data. You can follow this command to load some data. I've already done this as I've shown you earlier in this video, so we're gonna skip over this. The most important thing that we're gonna do is actually create embeddings from the data that we have in our Postgres table. And for that, I'm gonna use one of the coolest features in PGAI. It's called PGAI Vectorizer. It's gonna automatically embed the data in our Postgres table. To use it, it's just a simple SQL query. All we have to do is define the table name, use the olama embedding function, so embedding underscore olama, and then we give it the nomic embed text model name, the model name that we're gonna use, and the dimensions in this case, it's gonna be 768. I specify that I want some recursive character text spreading on the text column, and then one of the coolest parts is going to be the formatting, which allows me to inject additional metadata. In this case, every embedding is going to have the blog title and publishing date, which is going to be super important for RAG, allowing us to get some better results and making information and metadata more easily accessible to the LLM. So let's go ahead and run this, and that will create our vectorizer, and then those embeddings will be created in the background as we speak. So I'm here in Popsicle, and I'm going to run this. You can see here the vectorizer has been created and you can also see that I have a new table being created called blogs underscore embedding store. This is an automatically created table to house the embeddings. And you can also see I have this view created called blogs underscore embedding, which is a view uh, joined between the embedding table and the source data table. So now that we've created our vectorizer, let me actually tell you what's going on under the hood while the embeddings are being created by the vectorizer worker. So PGI vectorizer, again, it's an open source tool that's part of the PGI extension that is going to basically put embedding creation on autopilot. It automatically creates embeddings. It automatically keeps them in sync with the underlying data. And you can specify your choice of embedding model to use. In this case, we're using Olama and we're using the Nomic embedding model from Olama. So how it works is, you actually have data that's stored in a Postgres table. And so in this case, we have our source data, which is the blocks table in this example. And you're gonna have this embeddings table, which is where the final embeddings are gonna be stored in the PG vector data type. Now, what happens is when a new row is added to the database, so when data is added for the first time, there's a database trigger that gets triggered and it gets added to the work queue table. And remember, we had a whole bunch of things around chunking configurations, formatting configurations. We also have this configuration storage table in the database. Now, we remember in Docker, we created this thing called the PGI vectorizer worker. What this worker does is gonna make sure that if there's work in the work queue to go and execute it, it's gonna read the configuration from the database. It's gonna then chunk and format that text for embedding, and then it's gonna send it to the embedding service, in this case, Olama, uh, which is also running in our Docker network in order to get embedded. And then it's gonna take that result and write it back to the embeddings table. So the cool thing is once you set this up, all this is gonna take place under the hood and you as a developer don't need to worry about it. As you add data, as you delete data, your embeddings are gonna be updated without you even worrying about it. And the cool thing is now that it supports Olama models, you can use open source embedding models, run this locally, and you can have it totally be free and independent of API costs, as well as worrying about third-party API uptime, which as we know, can be a problem with things like OpenAI. So now that the vectorizer is created, what I've gone ahead and done is just given it a few seconds. And as you can see, I've initially ran this query and we got the result that, hey, there was 10 pending items. I ran it a few minutes later and we got the result that there's actually zero pending item. What this means is that the PGI vectorizer has gone ahead and actually created all the embeddings and done the splitting and done the chunking. We can see this is true by querying this blog's embedding table. So let me fetch a small query in order to just verify that. And as you can see, here's an example of a blog chunk 
along with the embedding that's being created. This is again, using the Nomic text embed embedding model. And you can see here that the custom formatting that we specified has also been applied. So for example, here, the blog title is included as well as a publishing date. And then what follows is the chunk of the blog, which, which follows afterwards, which is just a, the text chunk from that particular blog post. So this is really cool. So what have we just done in a few minutes is gone from having a table of blog posts to having a table of embedded blog posts, chunked blog posts. And now that's ready for use in RAG and search applications. And what's more, this has all been done using open source embedding models, thanks to Olama and PGAI. So let's take this to the next step. Let's perform a simple similarity search in order to find the vectors in the block chunks relevant to a specific search phrase. So in this example, I'm just going to use this similarity search query. Again, this is going to use PG vector in order to do the similarity search. The cool thing about PG AI is that you get PG vector out of the box. It's hundred percent complementary extension. And so we're going to use PG vector in order to do the semantic search. And what I'm going to do here is just search for the chunks that are similar to this phrase generative AI models, I'm going to find the top five. So let me go ahead and copy that over and run it in order to see what we find. And as you can see here, the chunks that I've gotten returned are actually all from a blog about DALI 2, which makes sense because this is a blog that is most similar to generative AI. You don't get results about startup advice. This is mainly about generative AI models. So there you have it in terms of implementing semantic search. Let's take it a step further and uh, do a RAG example. So what I've done here is just created this function that's going to summarize a particular post. So let me run this and then I'll take you through exactly how it works in a second. So what we're actually doing here is basically RAG in a SQL query. So the first thing that we're going to do is perform a similarity search in order to get chunks that are most similar to a certain query text. And we're going to use, again, this Olama embedding function for the nomic text embed, because that is the model that we used in order to create the embeddings. Then what we're going to do is use this function called Olama underscore generate, which is part of the model calling capabilities of PGAI. What's cool about this is that this allows you to call any Olama model. In this case, we're going to use tiny LLM as specified by the model name in the first parameter of this function. So we're going to use tiny LLM. And basically what I've asked the model to do is, Hey, just please answer the user question and mention the title of the blog post that you use to answer the question, just some simple prompts. And we're going to return the response that it's given. And in this case, we're going to test it with the question, what does Sam Altman think about generative AI models? Let's wait and see what the RAG system returns. Okay. So it took a few seconds uh, because everything is just running on my old MacBook Pro, I should probably update to an M4. We'll ask my boss after he sees this video. But you can see here, we've gotten a response from this generate rag function that we've just run. And in this case, you can see that this is a summary of the chunks. As I predicted, this is going to be about DALI 2. And this is basically a summary of the various chunks that the model got feeded in. And we ran it through this tiny LLM model, and this is the result. Uh, it didn't quite adhere to the instructions that I gave it, but with some maybe advanced prompting, we can get this fixed. So that's it. There you have it. I've taken you from loading in a data set to automatically creating embeddings and performing search and rag. We did this all using Postgres and the PGAI and PG vector extensions, as well as using open source models via Olama. All of this is, was free and open source to use. And it was really cool that it just ran locally on my laptop that I have with me. If you want to learn more about Postgres and Olama, head over to the PGAI repo. It's the place that has all the examples and all the information for you to get started building AI applications, using Postgres as your database and using Olama as your uh, LLM model deployment method. Uh, you can check out the readme for uh, information about installation. I've taken you through the Docker example, but there's also other installation methods, and you can run through the quick start as well as look at the Olama documentation that we have that takes you through how to 
I use Olama and some different embedding models that we offer. Head over to the PGAI GitHub repo or just go to pgai.com and uh, that'll take you straight there. I'm super excited to see what you're going to build. Leave a comment, leave any questions that you have. I'll happily answer them. Thank you so much for watching this video and happy building.